Okay, the uh, initial idea of using air to delineate the vitreous was uh, first introduced in 1989 by Anson when he described the technique to delineate the vitreous that is lost during cataract surgery. And based on the same idea uh, uh, to be used in uh, posterior posterior chamber vitrectomy, in general, optimum vitrectomy mandates a thorough removal of the vitreous efficiently and safely. The ever-going innovation in the field of instrumentation and machines aims at serving these goals. And this is of particular importance in complex cases of rheumatogenous and detachment with PVR in cases with uh, uh, diabetic fibrovascular traction. Efficiency necessitates a thorough vitreous removal. This is not always possible in the presence of high retinal detachment. And safety mandates avoiding unnecessary damage to the retinal tissue. Again, in cases of high retinal detachment, uh, this could uh, not be achieved uh, thoroughly. So filling the vitreous cavity with air instead of BSS shifts the refractive index inside a vitreous cavity from 1.33 to 1.0, which allows for a wider viewing angle. Together with the wide angle viewing system that we're already using, this is of special importance in narrow pupil patients and in patients with peripheral lenticular opacities. The force created by the surface tension between air and water uh, based structures like the vitreous and the retina helps further delineating the air vitreous interface, allowing for a more defined identification of the residual vitreous. This surface tension also combats the aspiration force of the vitreous cutter in between cuts, and this dynamic force stabilizes the retina under air, what I like to call into indentation. We can see here uh, you can shave uh, even very close to the retina over areas of uh, lattice degeneration, the very sticky vitreous, and safely without creating breaks. So let's see some examples here. High retinal detachment with a high risk of iatrogenic uh, break formation can drain not necessarily completely the retina uh, immediately after PVD and core vitrectomy. And then you go, uh, you can uh, easily uh, remove the peripheral vitreous safely. You can even induce peripheral PVD uh, under air. You can shave the vitreous in, in several layers like here safely while the retina is stabilized by the air and pushed backwards into indentation. You can uh, pull on the posterior hyaloid peripherally, again safely, and then take it out all together. You can see here. Uh, this is the technique of external indentation, even in the most experienced at hand, if you're doing it yourself or your, uh, your, your nurse, you can still create breaks, but with the endo indentation pushing the retina uh, backwards with the air inside, uh, it's safer. Even if a break forms, it's, it remains contained. Also, shaving the vitreous thoroughly around breaks, this can be difficult, even uh, under PFCL. But uh, this is a break here. If you can just drain through the break, and then you can shave the vitreous all around the break easily under air uh, without the need of use of uh, PFCL in this case. Uh, in cases of PVR with need for limited in feeder retinectomy, there is no need to use PFCL. You can just under air, extend your retinectomy as far as you want to go. This is a long-standing case with retinal cysts like you can see here, but safely under air, you can just uh, continue your retinectomy safely. Another case of, uh, again, inferior giant break. You don't need to use PFCL. This patient had also a macular hole, and you can manage the uh, inferior uh, retinal break and retinectomy under air. This is a patient with PVR, with peripheral retinal shortening, and after uh, extensive uh, core vitrectomy and with as much vitreous as possible, we can use a peripheral break to delineate the area of the retinal shortening where the air will, not, will go under the retina in that area, and then you can cut the retina uh, as necessary, and then you can use PFCL at the end to flatten the uh, retina uh, and drain the subretina fluid. So case, and another case of giant break, uh, if you have a giant break, and again here, uh, you don't need to use uh, PFCL, uh, you just use air, and, uh, uh, which is, provides a continuous flow, and unlike PFCL, we have to, to add more, and again, avoiding the potential complications of uh, PFCL. In cases of uh, fibrovascular traction in diabetic patients, also a sticky vitreous oversights of epicenters can be a, pro a problem, especially if hemorrhage occurs, but under air, hemorrhage is always contained, and even if you try to do this under PFCL, uh, under PFCL, hemorrhage usually spread, but under air, it's usually contained. And uh, this is another case of peripheral, very sticky vitreous in a diabetic patient can really shave the vitreous uh, safely, uh, avoiding uh, creating breaks and uh, providing thorough removal at the vitreous base 
of course, you can finish up the case with, uh, with uh, using the wider angle viewing system, you can, uh, uh, with the addition of air, which furtherly widens the view to do peripheral uh, or your pan retinal photocoagulation as far as uh, the parts plan. Uh, currently, the technique is I, even if I'm going to plan to leave the patient on BSS, I shift to air and then I go back to BSS after finishing the uh, laser. Uh, membrane peeling can also be done under air if you have an unstable retina uh, at the posterior pole. Of course, this can also be done under PFCL, but again, air minimizes the use of PFCL and uh, its potential complications. So, requirements is always a compensating infusion system. Of course, uh, uh, advanced cutters, 23, 20, 25 gauge, the smaller the better. High cutting rate and wide angle viewing system. The advantages of the wider uh, field of view up to the pars plana overcome the field limitations induced by narrow pupils, retinal stability even if a break is created, continuous flow of air like under PFCL, containment of hemorrhage if it happens in PDR cases, shorter overload surgery time, some limitations of course of visibility especially in patients with a, an open posterior capsule but this can be uh, easily uh, laminated with a viscoelastic and uh, the view uh, becomes excellent. And uh, some precautions, the time of the air fluid exchange is crucial. You don't need to do it uh, prematurely, not to induce peripheral breaks after PVZ and core vitrectomy. And you shave the vitreous until the posterior attachment of the vitreous base, and then you start the technique. Thank you very much.